he was so polite. And not because he had to, but because he respected him. He was polite. That's how I learned how to respect the cops, because my father did. I learned things because my father lived it. So did my mother. In our quest to change our country, we have to stop looking at the groups and the GOP and the Democrats and everybody else. If we want to save our country, we have to first save ourselves. In the last few days, we've done 40 days and 40 nights. I've asked you to try something different. Don't just pray. I mean, sometimes I'm praying. I'm in the car and I'll just pray and I'll just be out loud and I'm yelling at him. He didn't like it. But I always start and end my day on my knees. And my children, and it's hard to get my kids to pray on their knees, it's important that they see their dad humbled and on his knees. I've asked you to spend time with your family, just a little more time. I've asked you to get rid of all the lies in your life, all of them, even the little ones, the, the, everything. You know, my wife, she won't ever say that I'm not home. I'll say, oh, just tell them I'm not home. She's like, I'm not lying for you. You know why she does that? Because she doesn't want to show the children that lying is okay, even the little ones. I hate her for that. See, that's a lie too. I don't, I think I love her for that. I wanna give you something else. I want you to ask yourself, what is truly important to you? If you could only pass one thing onto your kids, the thing that's really important, what would you pass to them? And how are you living that? Don't tell them. Live it. I told um, some friends that work with me, we're all dads, and quite honestly, we work hard. I feel like my father sometimes. We feel guilty about not spending time with our kids or enough time with our kids. We were going someplace. I had to give a speech or something. I don't remember what it was. And we were all on the plane, and we were all pining for our kids. And this just spilled out of me. I said, this too shall pass. You know, George Washington and John, uh, John Adams and Jefferson, all of them, all of them, they weren't around their kids either. But you don't have to go that far. Those who are currently serving in the military, they're not around their kids either. It's just their time and it's just what they have to do. I don't know about you, but I've never met a son or a daughter of a hero soldier that was out in the field fighting. I've never seen somebody say, yeah, my dad was a soldier and he was out fighting. I've never seen that coupled with antipathy for our country. It's always love and devotion for our country in their children. Through the actions of their parents, they learn the dreams of their father and mother. Our actions have a gigantic impact. So how does this apply to you today? We talk a lot about, see the second half of the show where we're gonna talk, it'll make your head explode. We talk about things that are happening in our country. Let's say you work for a union. Are your kids hearing you watch this show and say, he's right, he's right, honey, he's right. It's the union bosses. I work for one of them. It's the union bosses that are causing us trouble. Those and the politicians, they've set us up. But then your kids don't see you stand up. What are you teaching your children? Are you teaching them that the, every guy, the everyday guy can't make a difference? If you're saying, and I've heard this in the last couple of weeks, I'd like to be there at 828. Boy, it's important to be there at 828. Steps of Lincoln Memorial. But I don't know. I mean, something could happen. There could be problems, I've heard. Are you teaching that, to your children through your actions that terror works, that people can frighten other people into sitting down, shutting up, being quiet, I don't know what you believe. You may be all the way to the left. Don't teach your kids that the ends justify the means. 
Don't teach your kids that somebody else has to do the work. Don't teach your kids through your mouth anything. Teach your children your values and your dreams by living it. What is it that your kids will say? What is it that, how is it? How will they answer? What were the dreams of my father and my mother? Back in a minute. Yeah, I have some bad news for you, America. Academia has lost one of the greats, Bill Ayers. Yeah, he's retiring, the old chap, from the University of Illinois later this month. Bill will miss you. How will they ever find a replacement who hates America as much as Bill Ayers does? <laughs> it's going to be tough. Hey, is Ward Churchill still available? Because he really hated America, too. All the best, Billy boy. Yeah, yes. And I hope you and yours enjoy the golden years, free of the interference from those rotten pigs and imperialist uh, oppressors. Ah. I hope you have a really, really good pension plan for, you know, all those future flotilla trips that you're going to... Hey, wait a minute. You do have a, a, a pension plan, too. Uh, isn't it weird? That Billy Boy has, the, you know, the country that he hates and has literally tried to blow up and destroy is now paying for his retirement. Huh. Huh. Well, that's a good, good call, though, on retiring now before the state can no longer pay for any of the pensions. By the way, Illinois has $13.5 billion budget gap. Ah, ah, do the math on that one. Oh, you can't. You're just one of the little peons. Yes. Can't pay that. No. Second largest, next, California. Who would have seen that one coming? $17.9 billion. Have no idea how they're going to get that money. Ah, tax the rich. That's how you should do it. In total, only 46 states have budget shortfalls. But that's it. <laughs> Experts say the states now will shed about 30,000 jobs a month till year's end to make ends meet. And by the way, they're saying that now between, I think it's 400 and 700,000 jobs are going to be lost because everything has got to go. In Colorado Springs, they're shutting off the street lights to save $1.2 million. In Camden, New Jersey, they're closing all three of the libraries. The governor of Wyoming is threatening to sell off state-owned land in the Grand Teton National Park. Cops, firefighters, teachers, all being cut all across the country. It's obvious that cuts need to be made. But guess who doesn't want any of these cuts to happen? Guess who can't give in? No, no, never. Yeah. Unions. Unions, you see. Why? Well, they're Obama's special interest buddies, that's why. SCIU, the AFL-CIO, and many others, they say for some strange reason that they don't want to give in. Teachers unions in New Jersey refused a proposal that merely said no raises for only one year. In Madison, Wisconsin, the teachers' unions are fighting for teachers' rights to Viagra in their benefits. They actually went to court over it. <laughs> That'll only cost you and me $786,000 per year. How's that helping the works downstairs for you? Hmm? Madison teachers, oh, how are you struggling with the oh-so-tough choice of kids' education or... Gramps copulation. I don't know. Do you really not understand this is the time to make cuts? Ha! No? I'm guessing that the people do. I'm guessing the teachers do. I'm guessing the fire and the police do. It's just the politicians and the unions. That's why they're continually piling on more unsustainable debt. Because the best way to fundamentally transform America is to collapse it first. If you don't know what Cloward and Piven is, oh, I beg you to read The Weight of the Poor, A Strategy to End Poverty. It was originally published in 1966. Cloward A. Piven and Francis Fox Piven. Uh, or uh, uh, what's his name? Cloward and, and Fox Piven. They had a theory to uh, force change through chaos, collapsing the system by overwhelming the welfare system. It's great. It's great. I'll send it out in my free email newsletter at glennbeck.com. You can sign up for it now. We'll send it out tomorrow. Sign up, sign up right now to get it. How else? How else can you explain the unwillingness to turn from reckless promises? 
Last week, I showed you how unsustainable the pensions are. Do you remember when I showed the little... So it is. the unions have convinced the firefighters that this was sustainable. And the politicians helped them. Okay. Now, when these 19 we, firefighters we couldn't do this to pay their pension, do the pensions, how many? There it is. It, you can't... It,